I feel like I have tried more makeup and beauty items in the past two months than I have in a long time. Partly probably because there have been so many new launches, but also I've just been really excited about a lot of makeup items lately. I don't know, I'm getting back into a routine of wearing makeup more often and it's just been fun for me. You're gonna see a bunch of these makeup items we're gonna talk about today being applied. I have some products that have become everyday staples that I am reaching for daily, but also some that I finally decided how I feel. Some of them I absolutely do not like, do not recommend, and some that I feel like are just kind of meh. So we're gonna get into all of that nitty gritty. Thank you to Mela for sponsoring this part of the video. One product that, I mean, I've been using, <laughs> I've been using Maylove products for probably four or five years now, maybe longer. And the star product in my mind, and I, I, I think it's Maylove's bestseller, is their Glow Maker Serum. This is what started it all for me. It's one of my favorite vitamin C serums, and I have other vitamin C serums I like, but they're different than this. And I will say this is the one I've gone through the most bottles of and I continually go back to. So I just opened a fresh one a few weeks ago and I'm like down to here. This one is jam packed. I don't, I didn't want to screw up what's actually in it. So it has vitamin C, vitamin E, ferulic acid and hyaluronic acid in it. I find that when I'm using this serum in the morning, my skin is just happy. I put this on first thing before I go into SPF, moisturizer and any of that. And the other thing I love about it is the consistency. It's very, very thin, thinner than most vitamin C serums I've tried. And the reason I do enjoy that is because it works really well underneath makeup. There's never any pilling. You can just lightly pat it into your skin. I'll pat a little bit on my neck and decollete, on my hands, whatever's just kind of left over on my fingers. It's just a beautiful antioxidant serum. If you've been looking for a vitamin C serum to just be the one for you, I really would recommend this. I also love that the price is kind of in that mid range. It's not completely breaking the bank. The other product I've loved, I've probably gone through, well, at this point, four or five bottles of this. Don't I don't even know how many bottles of the glow maker. <laughs> I've gone through a lot, but I have loved for quite a while the Nia 10 Calming Serum. One thing I love about working with Maylove is they let me pick whatever products I'm vibing with to talk about the ones that I personally love. So these are the two I chose to talk about. So this is a niacinamide based serum, but it's very, very calming. If you have any redness or hyperpigmentation, it helps with fine lines and just evening your tone over time. It kind of just does it all, which is why I end up throwing this into my nighttime routine pretty much every night, especially since I just got a new bottle. This one I got a little longer ago and I'm already a little bit farther down. So it has niacinamide, but it also has zinc and white tea extract. Super gentle, like I said. It can also help with your texture of your skin. Every time I'm putting this on, I'm always thinking about how it has that calming effect. What's really cool is I didn't know this until recently. You can use this AM and PM. I was just using this at night as a part of my routine. In the morning, I can put on my vitamin C serum and then layer this on top of it before going into my next steps. And I love that because then I'm getting the benefits of this twice a day. This is just one of those serums that, like I said, if you have any of those specific concerns, I really, really think you would like. It'd be a good one to add into your routine. Another thing they brought up, and I didn't realize this, they were saying niotin is a good alternative to the glow maker. If you have a sensitivity maybe to vitamin C based products, you might consider this one. But again, if you want the ultimate benefit, having both I think is the key. And you know, you don't have to take my word for it. They have reviews on their site. I mean, thousands and thousands and thousands of reviews for their products. They have so many other serums and creams and SPFs that are really good. Um, another one, a quick little shout out to the Hydrator Serum. It's their Hyaluronic Acid Serum that is really, really wonderful as well. And one other shout out is that they have a part on their site where it says how to layer Maylove products. And not only did I find this really helpful for, because I do own like four or five of their serums right now that I've been toggling with, or toggling between and trying to figure out how they work best together. I feel like it was just also helpful even if you're using other products too, just to kind of remind you of what to think about when you're putting things on in a certain order. So I wanted to shout that out. I can link the link to their little article about that. But yeah, highly recommend. I've recommended for years and I still recommend, still use. So all the links to the Maylove site along with their Glowmaker Serum and their Nia 10 Serum if you do want to check them out. And of course, if you wanna check out the Hydrator Serum as well. And I'm just now remembering they do have that Serums Trio where you can pick three of our starter serums 
all together and it's a little bit discounted because it's a bundle. So it comes with the Glow Maker, the Naya 10 and the hydrator. They're all so good, you guys. I also love that all of their bottles, I'm gonna put up a picture of their serums here. I love all the slightly different colors in the bottles that look pretty together. Okay, I know that's shallow, but I don't care. <laughs> So thank you again to Maylove for supporting my channel over the years and for sponsoring this part of the video. So those are my reviews on those. Let's dive into my reviews on um, all of the makeup items. Still drinking that Wandering Bear cold brew. I am vibing on it. The weather is not right for cold brew. Have you guys, <laughs> my mind is just going fast. Have you guys seen the, uh, I think it's like a TikTok or something of the person talking about uh, Duncan. It was like, I think Dunkin' Donuts specific, but they were just like iced coffee drinkers in the winter are like a special breed. I'd like to think I'm part of that special breed. Honestly, sometimes I just want a cold drink and I'm still in coffee mode. That's really it. But today might be the grayest, rainiest, darkest, gloomiest day I've ever seen. Tyler said the same thing. I'm like, what is going on? It is like 1 p.m. and it looks like it is 7 p.m. It's so bizarre. So I'm trying to, I've got, I've got things, lights on, I've got candles burning, just trying to like, I don't know, get the brightness level up, raise some cheer. All right, so I'm trying to decide how I wanna organize this. Do I wanna do like things I've been loving, the met and the awful, or just a mix? I think we're just gonna do a mix. We're gonna start with this one. So this one is the Hourglass Veil Hydrating Skin Tint. This was very expensive. I have the shade three. I love the packaging, like, I don't know. I was genuinely really excited to try this. I have been trying this off and on for months. <laughs> and every time I try it, I'm like, yeah, I still don't like it. And I, I keep it thinking, I'm gonna try it again and maybe I'll find the way to apply it. I'm gonna show you a clip of what this looks like on my skin. I know the lighting's not great, but it is what it is. It just catches onto any bit of texture on your skin. And what's bizarre about that is that it's not very much coverage, which is fine, it's a skin tint very low coverage, but the fact that it's not much coverage and it still gives that weird look on texture as though it were a foundation, completely to me defeats the purpose. Like if I'm using a skin tint, I just need it to maybe make my skin look slightly better, but certainly not accentuate anything I've got going on like texture or dry skin. So this doesn't cover anything and it accentuates. So for me, it's like a double bankrupt whammy. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I think I'm finally going to get rid of this, but I wanted to share about it in a video so I can tell you for sure I would avoid. I've tried it sponge, brush, with nothing underneath it, with SPF underneath it, with a uh, poor filling print. Like I've tried it all. I can't get it to look good. Anyway, any way you slice it, <sighs> such a bummer. Okay, an alternative that I think is similar, but beautiful is from Revlon. So ding, 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 this is a win-win and it is better. The drugstore totally defeats that, the Revlon Serum Tint. I have been so enjoying this. So I have done it with a brush and with a sponge and with my fingers. I think it looks pretty good any of the ways, obviously with the sponge, it's not gonna have as much coverage. So I've been using a brush with this and then at the very end, kind of using the heat of my hands to tap in wherever it might need, you know, a little extra TLC. I have the shade 201. It says it's skincare infused makeup, light to buildable coverage. I feel like I can get almost medium coverage with this. It's certainly not, I mean, again, coverage level. This has a lot more coverage than the Hourglass. It's got vitamin C, vitamin E, ginger root. It just, it's just pretty. It's one of those everyday products that just ends up being pretty and it has a little more coverage than you might think. And I would not say I've noticed any accentuation of dry skin or texture with this, which I am very appreciative of because again, if I'm doing something kind of low key, it's not what I want. Okay. Review, a quick review on the NYX lip liner in Need Me. So this is specifically the Slide On Glide On lip liner. I feel like I had trouble finding a link for this lately. It's the liner I have on today. The shade Need Me is my perfect everyday shade. I absolutely love it. It's a little darker, but it's one of those that you can color the outside of your lips and then just blend it and it actually blends. Whereas, you know, some liners, once it's on, it's on, but I still find that this stays really well. It's obviously inexpensive. So this has become my daily lip liner. The lip product I have on top of this is definitely a meh product. It's the NYX Fat Oil Slick Click. Definitely meant to be dupe-esque for like the Tarte ones like this. I will be comparing this side by side with the Tarte one soon in a future dupes video. This one is not bad. I mean, I have it on, I think it still can look pretty. It just doesn't quite have the 
thicker jelly likeness as like the Tarte one and the Makeup by Mario one that's kind of similar. So I have the shade No Filter Needed. Like I said, I think it's pretty. It looks really nice without lip liner too. So I don't think you have to have it, but just I feel like my lips can look really weird when I don't have lip liner on sometimes, especially when I've got like lights on. But yeah, one that I think is okay. It's just okay. I feel like there's probably better at the drugstore for the same price point in this, but I can't specifically point to one product like this from the drugstore I am loving, if that's making any sense. So if you are wanting to try this kind of product, I still think it's good, but I'm gonna have to keep trying some other drugstore versions to see if there's a better one out there. So let me know if you've tried one of these kind of clicky style products. If you have a favorite from the drugstore, let me know in a comment, please. You can help my pursuit. <laughs> okay, I am really liking this mascara. It's the L'Oreal Panorama Mascara. It's what I'm wearing today. I'll show you me applying it. It is one of those that when you apply it, the first coat looks okay, but it's that second or third coat magic that is where this really shines. So if you're looking for a one coat and done, I don't think this would be the one for you. But if you typically layer anyway, once this dries down for a little bit and you go back in, I just think it holds a curl pretty well. It volumizes, it spreads your lashes out. I just, it, it does everything I want it to do. I haven't noticed flaking. I will say, I think removal of this is a little bit trickier. I'm do, using a couple different cleansing balms and cleansing oils right now, and none of them, they work really well, but none of them are doing a great job at getting this off, which is interesting. So I end up having residue the next day. So. If that would drive you nuts, maybe avoid, but I do really like it. This is not waterproof, if you were curious, but I have black as black and I really, really like it. So if you're like me and you just like, I love having a favorite mascara. My favorite mascara is still the Tower 28 Make Waves one in black. Like that is still my favorite, but I love trying new mascaras. So if you're just like in the market for a new one and you generally like your lashes to look like mine, I think you would like it. All right, let's talk about a mascara that was so, so awful. Sorry, if you keep hearing that noise, my chair is broken. <laughs> one day I'll have enough time to actually go to the store and like look at chairs. I guess I could order online, but this one is so uncomfortable. I think I got it, I don't even know where from, Amazon Wayfair somewhere, and it is the most uncomfortable chair, but I wanted one that wasn't, if you saw, I talked about this a lot in my vlog where I give a tour of my workspace here, if you wanna see that vlog. I'll link it below gladly. Oh, I wanted a chair that the back doesn't come up too high because I didn't want it like being a big part of the show here. <laughs> okay, back to the mascara. So this is the Sephora Big By Definition Mascara. This is the wettest mascara you've ever tried. I've had this now open for six weeks now. So you'd think like maybe it would have dried out and that was kind of what I was hoping for when I first tried it. It is so wet. It gives you like four lashes. It is not it. I ended up starting over with my makeup when I tried to put this on again the other day. It, no, <laughs> that one can go. This one surprised me that I liked this. I mean, I knew I would like it, but that I'm liking it as much as I am. This is the Physician's Formula Butter Glow Bronzer and Blush. So I tried this actually pretty recently in a trying new makeup video. I have been reaching for this when it's one of those days that I want some bronzer and blush on and maybe highlight but I don't have the time to do the separate steps, like the bronzer, then the blush, and the... So this, I'll just mix my brush in it, and then it kind of comes out this bronzy peach color, but I'll just swipe that all over the cheeks, you know, in that area, and it ends up looking really pretty and glowy and kind of bronzy, kind of peachy. I've tried putting it kind of up there as a bronzer-ish, and I don't love that, but just on the cheeks, it is really, really pretty. It stays really well. It does have that slight smell that like the butter blushy type smell. So if you don't like this, maybe not. I keep holding out hope that Physicians Formula, they always have the little brush and all that, but I know they've launched a few products in thinner packaging and I keep thinking that their new launches would maybe be in that thinner packaging and still no. I know that doesn't really matter, but you know, I, <laughs> I'm just saying. So another drugstore product I have really been liking, Go Revlon. Revlon's having a moment for me. I feel like I've talked about like a year or two ago that Revlon was really, I'm like, where is Revlon? Like, what are they doing? I have been loving a lot from them recently. So this is in that same Illuminance line as the skin tint or the serum tint I talked about. This is their Skin Caring Foundation. This is slightly hydrating, but if you look at this and think, oh, Illuminance, like it's gonna be glowy, it's really not. This is what I'm wearing today. I would consider it hydrating, not glowy, not dewy. 
And I've even paired this over a super glowy SPF, it, well, my glow screen from Supergoop. And I only needed to set it just a little bit. I think it's a little bit more oily skin friendly. I don't know that this would be your favorite foundation if you're oily skin, but if you wanted something a little more hydrating, but especially if you have normal or dry skin, I think you would really like this. Medium coverage, slightly buildable. I've done it with a brush, with a sponge. I haven't really done it with my fingers much, but it's got squalane and hyaluronic acid in it. And I just really like the way it looks. It's got, if you're kind of torn between the two, I don't know that I could pick which one I like more. I think I might like the serum tint more, but that's more just because it's what I, this is the type of product I reach for the most at this point in my life, like where I'm at and what my day-to-day -day is like. But if you want more coverage, definitely go with this. But if you like a more hydrating light to medium, I would go with the serum tint. You probably could have guessed that, but in case you needed to hear it from me. <laughs> okay, I, I think I've decided I don't like this. It's from Milk Makeup. It's their Infinity Longwear Eyeliner. I tried it randomly. It transfers down. That will always be my thing. The liner itself is okay. If you're tight lining with it, whatever, but I'll put some in the water line and I don't want it to transfer down. And this one was very smudgy and transfery. So I've used it probably four or five times. It did it every time. So this is one, again, for the price, you can definitely find better at the drugstore. The Sephora 12 hour one is still the one I reach for. It's what I was wearing, what I am wearing today. And that one is so waterproof and does not transfer on the waterline. So I'll link that. It's like 10 or 12 bucks and there's like a hundred colors. Save the money, baby. This was the most interesting product and it took me a while to figure this out. So this is the Juvia's Place Cream Bronzer. I have the shade Buttercream, which is the lightest shade. I love, love, love the tone of this. It's slightly darker than my skin tone. It adds the right amount of like kind of shadow that I want without being too dark or too orange. So big fan of the tone. The biggest complaint about this is that it has a slight shimmer and it does. And the first time I used it, I was like, why does it look a like it looked pretty. But then the, the, I looked at it in the sun. I'm like, it just looks a little something's odd. You know what I mean? And as I'm looking closely at it, I'm like, it literally has this shimmer and it's not glitter but it's almost glowy. That's maybe the better term for it. And so I do think it can look a little bit weird in different lightings, but it can look so pretty. I'll show you me a clip of me applying it. I'm like, but see there, I put it on. I'm like, oh my gosh, I love the way it looks. The other complaint I have about it is I don't think the wear time is great. I've been, what I'm trying to do is find a dupe for the um, NARS cream bronzer. That is my number one favorite. I <laughs> hit pan again, like it is just my favorite. And tone wise, they are very, very similar. And again, you'll see in a future dupes video, me trying them. So you can kind of see for yourself side by side. But my point is it's not bad, but I, like I said, I don't think the wear time is great and it does have that slight glow. So it's just something to consider. There's a new one from the drugstore I've been playing with. I've been really enjoying, but it's not time for that review yet because I'm, I'm still, I'm still messing with it. I told you there's a lot of like misses, but I I'd rather that I'd rather be able to like, I, I almost don't like coming on here and just sharing, you know, 15 new products and I'm loving all of them because it, I, I want to be more discerning. And with this group of products, we are being discerning for sure. Okay. The L'Oreal True Match Concealer. This is their uh, Radiant Serum Concealer. It's just not for me. I don't like it. I don't like the way my under eyes look. It doesn't have enough coverage. So my blue always sticks through. It's definitely a thinner consistency but not too thin. Like I, I it, the consistency, it's just thin-ish. I like a little bit of a thicker, you know what word I wanted to say, just a thicker, <laughs> if you know, you know, <laughs> just to have a little more oomph to it, okay? This one does not have that and it doesn't have the coverage. I don't like the way it ends up looking on my under eye. It makes me look a little bit older, a little bit just, it's just not the one for me. So if you've been thinking about trying it because it's new and it's got radiant serum, it definitely has a serum texture because it is thinner, but other than that, I would avoid. I really, really did not like that. And I tried. No one's gonna be surprised. The CoverGirl Skin Perfector Essence, thought I would hate, cannot believe how much I love this darn product. I've already used all that up. I have used this every day. I'm not wearing makeup makeup, like with eye makeup and stuff. I have been wearing this, which is at least half my weeks, most weeks. I just grab a foundation brush. I'll put a little bit on one cheek and kind of use the brush to burst the beads. I mean, it's not really, but kind of, 
and the pigment, like it just looks natural on the skin. It covers more than you might guess. But again, it's not a foundation, but it covers more than you might guess. My skin just looks even. My complaints about the Hourglass one where it caught on weird to different textures, this makes my skin look better and healthier. I feel like generally, if I'm not wearing makeup on a day, I'm not wearing makeup. You know what I mean? I might put on my skincare and SPF, but that's it. Now I've been doing that and then adding this in because it takes like 45 seconds and my skin looks so much better than if I were just not doing anything. I can't get over it, you guys. I really can't get over it. I thought it was overhyped. It's not. Now, this is not necessarily the thing I'm reaching for when I'm gonna be putting on blush and bronzer and other stuff. So if that's what you're looking for and that's only what you're looking for, you might like this, but I, I just don't think that's where this shines. Okay, we may be without my main light here in a bit, which is okay, but it, it keeps blinking out. I think it's overheating, so we'll see. Next product, the Colfi Concealer. So you might not have heard of this, you may have, depending on how deeply <laughs> ingrained in the makeup world you are. I've heard a couple of my YouTube buddies that have tried this and really, really like it. So I kept trying it, kept trying it. It's not terrible at all. Like I have been using this a lot, but I definitely have found that it's just not my favorite of all the ones I've tried. It's a very medium concealer. And what I mean by that is coverage level, medium at, at max, but it's also very much a medium thickness. It's not super thin like the L'Oreal Radiant Serum one, but it's also not as thick and tacky as my favorite, the Natasha Denona one. I mean, it's still a pricier price point. So I just found that it just feels very medium to me. Anytime I've got a product like this where I keep trying it, I'm like, I don't know how I feel. I don't not like it but I don't love it. I'm like, that's what I need to share with you guys then. Because I'm like, I need to know whether I like it or not. I'm like, I don't know for a reason because it just feels very okay to me. It's not bad. It's just not great. And so if you're spending this amount of money on a concealer, now I want to look up how much this costs. Hold on. All right. My big light went out. We're just going to stick with it. It actually, my camera adjusted a bit. So it's not as dark as it just was when it first went out but we're just gonna roll with it, it's all it's all good. The Colfi Concealer is $26. The Natasha Denona one that is my number one favorite is 30, which is a lot for a concealer. But if you were already gonna spend 26, that Natasha Denona one, you guys, is not overhyped. I am telling you, it is that good. Anyway, okay, now let's talk about a very expensive concealer that I do not understand the hype. It's the Dior Forever Skin Correct. What do people see in this? I have used this so many different ways. I've had this for quite a while now and I can't figure it out. I don't know what people like about it. It always just looks okay. I guess that's it. It, it just looks okay. It's, a, I would say light to medium, but I feel like it just looks very concealery to me. Like it makes your under eye look makeup-y. You know what I mean? A little bit crepey, but nothing too much. It's not terrible, but it's not great. And it's certainly not as great as what I feel like a lot of people are saying. The packaging is cool. It's like glass, it's Dior, you know, it's all those things. But I think from an actual product standpoint, I don't, I just don't like it. Okay, I just don't like it. I feel like if, no, I, I just don't like it. <laughs> I keep making excuses for it because I want to like it because I bought it and it was a lot of money, but there it is. Isn't it interesting, the sound? I don't know, Ooh, someone ordered Domino's? That sounds so good right now. And we just finished eating lunch on a rainy day, pizza on a rainy day. Anyway, what am I talking about? Can you, the sound of cars going by when it's rainy is such a vibe. I don't know if you can hear it, but it's it's a vibe. All right, let's continue on. So next up, we'll do this one quick, quickly. It's the Ciele uh, Blush and Protect SPF 50. So it's a liquid blush with SPF. One of you guys brought up the funniest thought, or maybe I said in a video, you know when it's one of those things that you don't know if it was your idea or someone else's, and so I, I don't remember where this idea came from, but if you have SPF just like right there, you know, like you have that extra protection there, what's really the point unless you have extra SPF everywhere? Do you know what I'm saying? Like it just, I don't know. But someone else, I do remember reading a comment that said, well, you know, any extra protection is good protection, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, undoubtedly, but even still, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> it's just interesting. Regardless, the actual product is really, really pretty. It's really, really pretty. It's easy to apply. It blends in quickly. Honestly, like the Rare Beauty Soft Pinch and the new e.l.f. one, those are great, but you have to be so careful with them. This one, I don't feel like I have to be so careful with. And maybe it's because of the shade. The shade is 
Behati, which is like this beautiful light nudie pink. I really, really like this. Again, though, it's expensive for what it is. I do think it actually looks gorgeous, but if you were curious about the brand or this product, I do think it's good. A brow product, the Merit 1980 brow. When I first tried this, I didn't like it, but I ended up going through one and I have almost finished up a second. I, I retried it recently and I was like, wait a minute, I love this in my brows. And so, like I said, I used one up, ended up getting another one. And then now this one is almost used up, but it's got kind of a medium brow wand. And I think that's what I didn't like about it initially, but now I, there's something about the shape. It's not too tiny, but it's not too big. See what I mean? But yeah, it deposits just the right amount of color, not too much, not too little. It's easy to clean up. If you get a little bit out, it wipes right away, but it stays in your brows really, really well. So wanted to point that out. It's a pricey brow product, but I have been really enjoying it. And then, okay, I this was like the worst my skin has ever looked. Close to the hourglass. This is the Tarte Maracuja Juicy Glow. Absolutely not. This looked so hilariously bad on my skin. It made my skin look a little greasy, which I can, you know, it is what it is. I can powder, I can do whatever, but I don't know, man. It just looked so bad. I couldn't get it to quite blend in no matter how I tried. And once it was as blended in as I could get it, it just looked greasy and weird. So I was like, nah, there's way better out there. Luckily I bought this small one. I'm trying to remember, did I buy this or was it like a sample? I think I bought this as like a Sephora or at Sephora. I don't know. Either way, didn't like it. Okay, and then another one I'd heard a lot of my buddies rave about is the Merit Day Glow Highlighting Balm in Kava. Oh my gosh. Okay, this is what I'm wearing today. And actually, you know what? Without the main light on, I feel like you can see the highlight a little bit better. You can also see the blush, how it's like a little bit, it gives that kind of like it's totally dried. It's not tacky at all, but it still gives that look. This is gorgeous. I didn't, I was like, okay, it's a highlighter stick, like whatever. This is like what the RMS Living Luminizer was to me, where it was almost this glossy balm like highlighter, but this one dries down. It doesn't stay tacky and weird and it stays. And it just makes the skin look glowy and healthy, but it's not a highlight highlight where it do you know what I'm saying? I love it. I just get a little bit on my finger, tap it on wherever I want it. And I have been really, really enjoying this. So wanted to bring that up because it's so easy to use. I've talked about before. I don't use a lot of highlighter, at least right now. And so if I am, this is one of the few I'm actually reaching for because it's so quick and easy and it always looks really, really pretty. I'm talking about like for a date night too, you know, like the candlelight. So those are all of the reviews that I have. Thank you again to Maylove for sponsoring a part of this video. If you want to check out their Glow Maker Serum, my favorite vitamin C serum, or their Nia 10 Calming Serum, or their Hydrator Serum, maybe you want to check out that Trio, which is a bundle. It's discounted if you buy it that way. I will have those links down in the description box. I will also have them in a pinned comment if that's easier for you to find. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed. If you are into this type of makeup review video, I have a lot of these. <laughs> I've been doing them every other month for quite a while and sometimes every month. So if you are wanting to check out more of those, I'll put my playlist of those videos. It's organized from like most recent to least recent. So you can see if you missed any there. I hope you subscribe of course as well and I will see you in my next one. Bye.